Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Mark here from DiabetesDietGuide.com talking all things diabetes and helping you get on top of those tricky glucose levels. Today we are doing a video that has been requested from the people. So in our Facebook group, a common theme keeps coming up and that is that people want to know how to get on top of the dawn phenomenon. So thanks for the request and we're going to jump into the video and look at the three top ways to do it. Make sure you hang around to number three because that is by far and away the best solution. So first things first, let's define what the dawn phenomenon is. And it's mostly seen in type one diabetes. And the reason is, is you're having to rely solely on um, subcutaneous or injectable insulin, unless you're using pump therapy, to manage your glucose levels. So you have none of your own production. Now the dawn phenomenon is when your glucose levels start to rise, usually first thing in the morning, as the hormones that help you get out of bed start to kick in. Now obviously if you do night shifts, that um, a phenomenon might be reversed and you might find it actually happens at a different time of the day. But for the vast majority of people, actually it's in the early hours of the morning. So what happens is your body starts to release um, stress hormones like cortisol that start to get things going. So they start to tell your liver to release a bit more glucose in the storage form of glycogen in the liver. And as a result, you would see a rise in your glucose levels. Now without diabetes, what your body does is it recognizes this and it will release a little bit more insulin just to keep the glucose levels in that narrow bandwidth to prevent your glucose levels going too high or too low. But obviously with diabetes, type one diabetes in particular, you're a bit stuck um, because you tend to have one insulin that's looking after the background side of things. And therefore it can be very difficult if you have different requirements for that insulin throughout the day. More on that later. So that's all the dawn phenomenon is, a um, hormone related increase in your glucose levels at a particular time of the day, usually first thing in the morning. So let's jump right in and see the three ways that you can get on top of this. So the first thing to do is if you're on injectable insulin therapy, you'll generally be on a basal bolus regimen. And by that, we mean a long acting insulin with a rapid acting insulin. Some people, although they are far and few between these days, will be on a twice daily insulin regimen or some version of it. But most people will be on that basal bolus regimen. So the basal or the background or the long acting insulin is there to really look after the things in the background, to look after the liver from releasing too much glucose so your baseline glucose levels are correct. Now, those insulins tend to last around 24 hours, which is great because it gives you 24 hour coverage and it keeps you safe. So it gives you that 24 hour insulin protection. The problem with those insulins are that you can't adjust them for different time points in the day. So if we draw this out and I just go to the handy pen, hopefully it's working. So essentially what you're having is you have this steady 24 hour insulin protection like this. Now, some insulins do have a minor peak on them. So when you inject them, you get slightly more insulin at the beginning, but the newer insulins like Traceba and Tegeo, they tend to be a bit more flat in profile, which is why a lot of people are starting to migrate towards these because there's some data to show that they reduce the incidence of hypos. But that's not what we're talking about today. So we have our background 24 hour coverage. And in an ideal world, what that does is it nicely matches your background in uh, glucose requirements. So the two are in sync. They're not crashing your glucose levels and they're not making them rise. The problems emerge when what happens is you have, if we split this day almost down here. So this is the early morning, the AM, and this is the rest of the day. So you're ticking along and the basal insulin is correct, but then this dawn phenomenon kicks in and in, uh, hormones start to get to released which then interfere with how well your body can control your glucose levels. And as a result, the glucose levels start to rise. Now, the tricky thing you have here is you have a different requirement for your glucose levels here. So you can't increase the basal insulin because if you increase the basal insulin, you'll sort this part out, but then you're going to drop your glucose levels for the rest of the day. And it works the other way around. If you're having hypos overnight, it might throw out the rest of the day. So it's a tricky thing to do. So one solution is to speak with your diabetes team. And essentially we go back to a twice daily background insulin. 
So these background insulins, known as intermediate acting insulins, like insulatard or human and I, work for around 12 hours a piece. A little bit longer, but a good rule of thumb is to say 12 hours. So then what you can do is you can give one dose for the first half of the day when you need it, and you can give a second dose in the evening or whenever the dawn phenomenon is happening for you to prevent those glucose levels rising in the first place. Now, the reason this isn't always the best solution though is because if the dawn phenomenon isn't kicking in to around 4 a.m. and you're given an increased dose in the evening to prevent that, that's a lot of time between going to bed and waking up where you have an increased insulin dose, which actually isn't needed. It's only for that small part of the morning. So actually you might be susceptible to hypos in the first instance before the hormones kick in. So that can be problematic. The only way you'll know that is if you try it and see what the glucose levels do. Any hypos, I'd suggest maybe thinking about another solution. The other other reason that we're not too keen on this is because those intermediate acting insulins, they're not as physiological as the new insulins, so they have a higher hypo rate. Um, and ultimately as well, if you would forget to take one of these doses, other problems can emerge, whereas at least the 24 hour acting insulins or even the newer insulins that give you longer protection, give you a little safety net should something happen where you don't take your insulin. So that's number one. Number two is, we're on out of paper, doesn't matter. Number two is in this area here, this is when the problem's happening. So you can use your rapid insulin to correct this. If you're happy with your overall glucose control, then it's not gonna be such a big deal that you're waking up a bit higher. It could be a bit annoying, but at the same time, remember glucose levels are an average, and if your average is good, then one little blip in the day is not gonna be a huge problem, even if it is a bit annoying. So you can always wake up and correct the high glucose level applying your correction ratio to help drop your glucose levels. If you're not familiar with correction ratios, go check out my carb counting videos. It will talk you all the way through everything to do with correction ratios and how to apply them. Some people, although it's not the most practical advice, will actually wake up before it happens. They'll get the data to show that it's happening day in, day out. They might be using like a continuous glucose monitor or the Freestyle Libre and see in their glucose patterns that it kicks in, say 4 a.m. every day without fail, in which case they'll wake up, give a minor correction dose, and I would stress that it should just be a micro correction. Don't overdo it. We're trying to just offset the high rather than correct it entirely because it could cause a low. And then they just give a little bit to stop that glucose levels going a little bit too high. So rather than it spiking up here, it might just tail off like this. Not the most practical advice because quite frankly, who wants to be waking up at 3, 4 a.m. every morning to give some insulin? So the other thing you could do is just wake up in the morning and deal with it then. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I gave you a bit of a teaser at the beginning about number three being the best option. And pump therapy is absolutely by far and away the best way to deal with this. And the reason is that you can be so much more flexible with an insulin pump. And that's because you can adjust the basal rates throughout the day when you need them. So rather than having this straight line like this, instead, can we find the red? You can start to adjust the basal rates as and when they are needed. And you can set this as time blocks. Now you can't do that with injectable subcutaneous insulin because once it's in, that's the dose you're getting. Pump therapy, you can adjust it as and when it's required. So for the dawn phenomenon, you dial up your basal rates and then that helps to counteract the effect of these hormones, which is ultimately what your body would be doing anyway to prevent hyperglycemia and therefore the pump is doing the work for you without you even having to think about it other than programming the pump with your diabetes team in the first instance. So much more flexible, and it's actually an indication for a lot of people to look at pump therapy. So that might be an option if you haven't thought about it. If you're experiencing the dawn phenomenon and it's causing you a bit of misery and you're not on insulin pump, maybe go speak to the diabetes team, see what they think. And that's it guys, we're gonna leave it there. That's three ways to prevent the dawn phenomenon. Hope you found it useful. If you did, hit the subscribe and like buttons. It helps us out a lot and gets our video in front of more people. If you want more information like this, that's all in a neat little package, go to the website, which is diabetesdietguy, like guyman.com, diabetesdietguy.com. It's all free for our patients and we are current, uh, constantly adding new videos to help you guys out. If you have any comments, leave them below, and we're more than happy to take suggestions for videos for problems that you might be seeing. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you later.